I've always wanted, been, wanted to be one of those cool poets, you know, that wear sunglasses, but actually it's <laughs> That's really difficult to read with. Anyway, this one is set in an alternate universe where Canada's medical assistance in dying scheme makes its way to the UK. And it's a list of all the people that the government might kill. It's very cheerful <laughs> compared to my other work. We're a brave new world with a new world order where nobody is illegal and no country has a border and everyone is equal and life is sublime. And if it isn't, we'll give you a deadline. And if you're too sick, don't worry, we know loads of little pricks. <laughs> because why live feeble when you could take the needle? <coughs> and if your condition stops you from seeing your friend, my thumb is overshadowing the poem. You can visit us for a shortcut to the end. And if you've got a mental illness that keeps you out of work, we can ferry you into an inescapable chillness beyond that final hypnagogic jerk. That's one for the neuroscientists. Anybody in the audience? Woo! Neuroscientists. <laughs> no, there never is there, is there? <laughs> uh, it's the modern equivalent of cutting the brakes on your wheelchair and going for a nice long walk by the coast. And we know it's not hard. No, it's really not fair to be solid when it's easier to just be a ghost. It's a final solution for the weary worker, a horror story to be turned into BBC tearjerker. They'll tell it good in Hollywood when you're not yet cold. They'll write some piffy dialogue about how you never got old. They'll make it with that actor you despise. He'll do your signature dead face and stare out with vacant eyes and later get fired for biting the director's thighs. In the year 2525. In the year 25, 25, <laughs> when the poor people are no longer alive, when we helped all the disabled die, you will cry. In the year 25, 95, only the richest fucks will survive, only the wretched zombies will thrive in their hive, and do lots of incest because that's what they like. <laughs> And back down here, it's a match made in heaven, and that's where you're going with the symptoms you're showing. You see, there's not much we can do outside of upping your disability pay or helping you find purpose in life, but to be honest, mate, we can't be asked. And you're nothing much more than surplus. You're depressed, badly dressed, and perpetually in a state of itching unrest. And we'll make it civil, if you like. You can take the drug at home, if you'd rather die alone. Or you could come to the clinic. Don't be a cynic. You can't criticise what you've not tried. And guess what? You can't sue us once you've died here at the home for medical assistance in suicide. Yes, at the clinic, we'll help you slip into something more comfortable, like the icy embrace of death. We'll make each last moment sweetable as you draw your final breath. And as you shudder toward oblivion with each hypnagogic jerk, we'll turn and say to your friends, Oh, such a shame you couldn't find work. Because really, what's the point of being poor, disabled and depressed? when you could get it all off your chest by having a government-assisted cardiac arrest. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're gone, you can meet God, who I won't capitalise in this poem because I hate the sod, and maybe he hates us too and hates poems that end prematurely because the author signed up to the... <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Woo! Good night.